The only problem is, no one's actually asked you any questions. Oh my goodness, <laughs> no. not even my wife. <laughs> actually, no, maybe we have. We had a question from your lovely wife. No, actually, there is one question for you. Um, and they want to know, obviously, you've been part of Formula E since, well, you've been mm. a, uh, what shall we say, an observer in, okay. in the garages. Um, how much more work are you going to have to do? How much more work? Well, it depends how hard they work as opposed to how much more work I've got to do. I come back to it, though, because uh, I remember I was at the first season in Monaco. I went to the race there, and then I came to Berlin in season two. And then it's been in season three where it got quite but busy. But is that because you were working? Because you were uh, doing no, 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 no. a bit the, of commentating? The first one was <laughs> purely as a spectator. Uh -huh. I actually sat okay. in the grandstands at the swimming pool complex and uh, watched everything unfold from there. So I've seen the championship unfold. But in terms of uh, the actual sharp end and what we do... What we yeah. It'll be a little bit more, but uh, in reality, I was pretty busy anyway. You know, the, the apt guys, they like to make sure that everybody that's in that garage is uh, active and doing something. Yeah. Uh, you're not, but you're not allowed to work in the car. You've only got 20 people can actually physically work on the car. And so that's something about the regulations. So the majority of the work is actually done behind the scenes and very often outside the garage, just making sure that everything's running according to plan. Um, I, I quite like this uh, question here from Matthias e Estrom. Um, Matthias he, Ekstrom. Yes. <laughs> Indeed. He says, how funny do you rate the Bwemi chat after the last race today? The last race uh, of last year. I think, I, that's, I think that's what they're implying. Yeah, yeah, it was without doubt one of the most bizarre things I have seen on television. Because... Uh, mm -hmm. First of all, I've known Bohemi for a long time, and it was very, very much out of character, I have to say, uh, to the point where I was thinking, has he bumped his head? You know, and, and clearly he had when he had the accident. But uh, it was something that is, well, from a television perspective, it was TV gold for yourself and Dario and Jack commentating on it in a way, because, you know, it's just unfolding in front of you. But it just shows you the intensity, though, the intensity that's in it, because this is something I think it's difficult for people at home maybe to, to understand. For Lucas and for Sebastian, one of them was effectively going to win the championship. And uh, it's been a championship that's gone around the world for you know, nine months. There's been a lot of investment of time and energy, and one is not. And uh, that was the key pivotal point, in my opinion, was basically that race and then that, uh, I would say, outburst. And uh, ultimately, the next day, it was down to Lucas to, to pick up the title and to pick up that trophy. But it was definitely probably not Sebastian's finest hour. No. Do you think we'll see it again? Sorry? Could we see it again? No, I don't think so. Nice Actually, I, you know, I think uh, the, the accident he had in free practice was a bigger accident than yes. maybe most people expected. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've been in a racing car and you have these incidents and the adrenaline forces you on and you keep on going. But uh, certainly it was a tough one for him. OK, next question for you. How involved will Audi be with the fans and will they ever offer VIP treatment to loyal fans like they did to me? From and Scott Wiseman. This? Scott Wiseman. Scott well, I'm Wiseman. glad Scott enjoyed himself. He did. I suppose Scott. the fact that this is on Facebook Live sort of suggests what uh, the approach is. Very open. Uh, the, you know, we're in a position now where I think the championship it allows you to maybe be a little bit more open in that respect. And uh, this is the future, the way we're, we're attacking it, is uh, to, to be out there and with the fans. Because that's the thing about the championship as well. It goes to the races. So, you know, the fans are quite up close and personal yeah. and uh, get to see it. Uh, the VIP treatment that obviously you got there, Scott, uh, that was very special just for you. <laughs> he also wants to know, will you support the push for a British race, given that you have so many fans here? Yeah, clearly. You, you, Britain is a huge part of the racing fraternity and uh, a big fan of uh, supporting for British races, no question about it. But we've just got to find the right streets. The interesting thing is the Closed Roads Act was something that's gone through the British Parliament which would allow a city to apply for one of 20 spaces every year to close the roads without having to do all the judicial work of uh, making a special deal with the government. And uh, this is something the MSA, the governing body in the UK, has organised. And so now it's effective, and that will make it much easier if 
Edinburgh, Glasgow, Dumfries wants to have maybe a Formula E race. You didn't mention London there. No, Sorry. because Edinburgh, what? Glasgow Edinburgh, and what? Dumfries so no, no, no. it would be a lot easier for my yeah, mum to I, come along. I, I definitely heard London there somewhere. <laughs> um, next question is from, from Sven Cannenberg. Have you signed an official reserve slash development driver for season four? Well, actually, I was thinking about uh, maybe coming out of retirement for that. Well, you know, uh -oh. official uh -oh. reserve, <laughs> we've got uh, Daniel and Lucas, and so we don't expect or anticipate that there'll be any requirements for any reserve drivers. Well, to be fair, I mean, Lucas even broke his foot and still managed to race, so I, I can know. see why you don't need a reserve driver. It was funny in Berlin because he was limping a little bit, and, you know, Brazilian, Brazilian footballers tend to limp a little bit if they, you know trip over a piece of grass or something like that but then he said it was really quite sore after the race and our doc sent him off to actually have a real x-ray not just a bit of strapping to get him through and uh, then it was clear that he had quite a bit of damage to it much much more than I think anybody expected apart from our doc who said go and get that scene to as soon as you can. I think we all felt quite bad afterwards because no one gave him any sympathy in the pit lane when he was hobbling around. And we didn't give him any sympathy no. afterwards we <laughs> okay. said you've got to get back in the car and the next race is more important than the last one. Well it obviously, it obviously works whatever you said. Um, I have another question. Uh, Oh, sorry, it's, a, it's another, uh, given that Alan is from Scotland, will he push for a UK race? But I think we've covered that. Um, oh, here's a Definitely. good one, um, which I think we probably touched upon a little bit today. How difficult or easy was the decision to leave WEC and join Formula E? Oh, it's very difficult, you know, because for a few reasons, actually. One, the WEC uh, was a very, very big part, and the, Le Mans was a very big part of... I would say the making of the histories yeah. of Audi and motorsport. It was also the start of our electrification development as well with the hybrid systems that were running on uh, the on the R18. But uh, you don't just switch off that history and emotion overnight. Uh, but, you know, like every book, there's a change of chapter. And it was the time for a change of chapter. And uh, so therefore it had to be done. But there's no question it was with a heavy heart, but at the same time, it was also with uh, other opportunities of something new and looking forward to the new challenge and the fresh challenge and different, different parts of it as well. And so I think for the engineers, it was, uh, it was something where they could switch off looking in one way, but they had to very, very quickly look in another, another direction from myself. As, and Lucas mentioned it as well. You know, it, it was a big part of our careers, but, you know, the times do uh, divert and you know yeah, motorsport is is one big family in that respect so you do see people bouncing back and forward yeah, and coming around absolutely